Nope has to be the most thrilling movie experience I have ever seen in, well, ever. I can't remember any movie that had me leave the theater in such a rush of emotion. I remember seeing all the trailers come out because they just popped up on a YouTube recommendation and curiosity took over, then thinking, huh, okay, a horror movie about two people encountering aliens in a rural area. Not my cup of tea, really. Then the final trailer popped up a few days before the premiere, and it gave off a different feel than just aliens and horror. I thought it felt tonally inconsistent with the others and wondered if this was going to be some horror comedy thing. So I thought, why the hell not, and took my brother to go see it on Saturday. And oh my god, was that a good idea. It was a heart racing experience, but not in the typical horror movie way. It was interesting how it told its story about a brother and sister looking to get a money shot of a UFO and getting rich and famous from it. Like the first 30 minutes of the film, the brother goes out into the field of their ranch late at night to get back a runaway horse and then sees the UFO just snatching it up at a twister looking thing. And the moment he tells his sister, she is all about getting cameras set up to get a perfect look at it. Because they need money, they own a horse ranch that trains them for Hollywood, and people aren't really interested in that anymore. That short description does not do the film's story justice, though. It's a dramatic and thrilling film, but don't let that horror tag make you feel uneasy. I really wouldn't call it horror, save for a few cheap Finance of Freddy-style jump scares scattered about. The actors did a great job selling their characters as real people, which is a lot harder than you think in writing, and cinematography was well done, and the sound design worked so well for what they were trying to convey. Okay, going into spoiler territory now, please go watch the movie because it's an experience you want to have for yourself, and because you likely won't understand much from this discussion I am about to start. Okay, if you're still here, or came back, thank you for giving me your time. This film really isn't horror at all. They make it abundantly clear that the saucer is a living organism and not a ship. Explaining the monster and giving the audience a good view of it throughout the film is the antithesis to a good horror film. But I don't think horror was really what they were aiming for here. And it's in the most nonchalant manner when the brother just walks into the house and tells his sister and the tech support guy with them that it's not a ship, it's a living organism, and they just take that as fact and he starts explaining its behavior with his knowledge of horse taming to help him. The brother's explanation comes after we see it consume a bunch of people and get a good look of its interior with them. So we have a confirmation of what we suspect from that moment. The twist that the saucer is like an animal that could camouflage as a cloud did catch me off guard, in a good way that is. I don't think there's a film out there that took things in a direction like this. It certainly caught me completely off guard, which does not happen often. They do have a lot of red herrings here and there to try and throw you off and make you think that there are actual aliens. Like the tech support guy is sitting down at the Fry's electronics place that they get brought the cameras from watching the cameras on the ranch and someone is coming up behind him and they try to like frame it as an alien is approaching but no it's just his co-worker and the brother gets lured into a barn by a bunch of kids dressed as you know your typical large-eyed green-skinned aliens because the sister stole a statue of a horse from their parents place to try and use as bait on the saucer this film is trying to be dramatic and thrilling with this touch of mystery sprinkled in. The ship shows itself clearly throughout the movie and especially at the climax and for a while it just looks like your run-of-the-mill flying saucer but at the climax the thing like opens up to reveal something that looks quite unique and so otherworldly that my attention was completely fixated on the screen waiting to see just what would happen next and as the scene dragged on and the moment continued the more I was able to get a good look at this, the more I was just intrigued by this alien organism. I also like how they managed to make the four principal characters still, well, being here after the thing rains blood on their house after it ate 40 people, makes sense too. The brother and sister needed money, and at the beginning of the film, the saucer rains metals on their home after, you know, one of its consumptions, and a coin flew down and rammed right into their dad's eye, killing him, so it's also a bit personal for these two. The tech support guy, while installing the cameras on their ranch, realizes they're looking for aliens and is made out to be a bit of a nutter for those sort of things, explaining his knowledge of UFOs and the like, so he joins out of curiosity at first, mostly remotely linking to their cameras at his workplace, and then showing up at their home uninvited and later stays there because this is serious business and he wants to help get a shot to prove that aliens conclusively exist and possibly save lives. 
This saucer does eat people, and there's likely a lot more around the world doing just that. And during the second act of the film, the brother and sister call an old Hollywood camera guy who specializes in capturing impossible shots, so to speak. And at first, he thinks they're just nutters until he hears about 40 missing persons cases on the news and it shows up. From the scenes where he's just looking at old footage about animals killing each other in the wild, and from his actions in the climax where he goes on a hill, exposes himself to the alien to be eaten while recording with an old crank camera, I think his reasoning for being here is that he's old and has kind of seen it all and merely wants this one final recording of something extraordinary before he dies. They're all here for a reason and even addresses the fact that what they're doing is dangerous and stupid but follow through and use their own expertise to get it done right. One more thing I wanted to touch on was the monkey Gordy because I know I had to explain this to my brother and I'm sure many were confused by it too. So the Asian cowboy Glenn, and yes, I didn't absorb any of their names in the film and I am way too lazy to actually look that up, was part of a sitcom TV show as a kid where they had this monkey Gordy as part of a suburban family and it went off the rails on recording and killed the parents and nearly his co-star sister, you know, not his real family of course. And even though Gordy killed them all and was completely covered in blood, he advances slowly on him hiding under a table and tried to fist bump him because that was their thing in the show before Gordy was shot by the police. Now the Asian cowboy guy is in that rural valley and was running an amusement park, like an old western style amusement park, and was feeding horses to that saucer for the longest time. At the beginning of the film we see the brother is looking out for the horse and then he sees one of the man's shows taking place in the far distance and I'm pretty sure the saucer comes and eats a horse. Speculating here, but I think that experience with Gordy as a kid made him think of taming wild beasts as possible and profits could be made if he did it right. He says during his last show where the thing eats him and those 40 people that he's done this so many times and he believes the saucer trusts him. He's putting too much faith in a wild animal like the producers of the sitcom did and didn't learn their lesson from his childhood experience and that's why he did all this and everyone paid for it like with the sitcom. Again, I am speculating and if you think there's a better explanation for the point of Gordy, then comment down below. I would like to start a discussion with anyone interested. I wouldn't say I like this film, not that it's bad. Far from it, I think it's great. Like this is not the right word here, more like I enjoyed it and found it to be the most interesting experience I have seen in the movie theaters and I don't know if anything will ever top it nor raise the same emotional thrill as it. It's a good movie and I would recommend to anyone that has yet to watch it to go do so as soon as possible. So those are my thoughts on Nope. If you like this video and are new to the channel, click that like button and comment your thoughts down below and head over to check out my other video essays, music analysis, and overanalyzing Shira and the Princesses of Power. You might find them enjoyable as well and consider subscribing for more content like this to come.